I'd like to call this meeting to order, June 14th, 2021. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adequate notice of this meeting was advertised in the Asbury Park Press and The Beacon on January 14th, 2021, and as amended on June 10th, 2021, and by posting a notice in the Fork and River Post Office and the Lenoka Harbor Post Office, and by filing a copy of the notice with the Lacey Township <coughs> Clerk, as required by the Open Public Meeting Act. Mr. DeGeorge, could we have a roll call, please? Ms. Claus. Here. Mr. Scanlon. Here. Mr. Peters. Present. Mrs. Desenza. Present. Mrs. Downing. Present. Mr. Polino. I am here. Mrs. McAvoy. Here. Thank you, Mr. DeGeorge. At this time, we will have public comment. An audience member wishing to make a comment shall raise his or her hand and when called upon, state their name, address, or affiliation and intention to make a statement. Comments shall be limited to agenda items only. Comments shall be addressed to the board president. Comments shall be made on one issue at a time. Comments shall be limited to five minutes. No audience member will be recognized twice until all who wish to comment have been recognized. At this time, is there any public comment? Seeing none, we will go on to board comment on agenda items. Mrs. Claus? Um, yes, actually, I have a question about the summer enrichment program. I just want to know if this is the first year that we've ever done this program, or is this first year? Okay. Yeah, first year. Well, yes. We've had kind of recovery. Okay. Oh. Mr. Um, Decker, we can't hear you. We've had credit recovery for high school students, but this is the first year we've had a summer enrichment as the way it's structured now. Okay. Do they get credits also through this enrichment program, or is it totally separate? Separate. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That was my question. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Desenza? Um, I have a question related to what Mr. Decker just said. What is credit recovery? They can um, make up a class during the summer? Is that what that is? For high school credit, yes. Okay. Um, also, Mrs. McAvoy and I would both like to add virtual meeting attendance to policy and bylaw so that board members can attend meetings remotely due to illness or travel or whatever. We have so much experience with it now and many other districts already do this. It would also prevent meetings from being postponed due to lack of a quorum. And I feel that we could ask NJSBA policy person to help us craft the wording or we could ask Strauss SME, but I'm sure there is wording readily available for virtual meeting attendance. Mrs. Desenza, so Mrs. Desenza and I did discuss that and I suggested that she bring it up during the agenda meeting and ask the other board members how they felt about it. Right, Mrs. Desenza? Yes. Question. Yes, Mr. Peters. Was it you? Was it me what? Who said question? Oh, Frank. sorry, Mr. Polino. It was me. So in regards to this, is this something that um, has been run through school boards and a county superintendent? Is it, or is it, is it just a limited thing because we're still in that pandemic mode and what happens in the fall? Are they going to pull it back or whatever? Because I'm all for it. I think it's a right. good idea. But. In the board trainings, I think Mrs. Desenz and I went to both the same one, and they were discussing that some boards were putting it into policy that a board member could um, attend remotely. Is there any other board members that have any feelings one way or another about it? Yeah, how, how would we go about that? Would we have a screen projecting, Dr. Clark? Projecting with the board member's face on there? Yeah, so I mean, we'd have to work out the logistics, but I think what we should do is reach out to Strauss Esme oh, and yes. I'll have it ready for our next policy meeting. Yeah. And then if it's something that is doable, then we'll figure out the logistics of how it gets done. Right. We have to do a separate invite for a private session. I'm sorry? We'd have to do a separate invite just for that board member only for private session. Yeah, that's what I mean. There's some logistics that we would have to work out if it's permissible. Right. I, I, was, just, I was just questioning how legal it was, if you knew, and um, I was going to suggest yep. saying it. Because as far as vacations, when I go on vacation with my family, I love you all, <laughs> but I'm yeah. with my family when it comes to vacation. But illness, 
um, what I don't know what the other one was. I don't see a problem, but I don't, I'm not sure if legally logistics if we can do it. Right. So right. We have to look into May it. May. Yep. The perfect one. And we'll reach out to our board attorney also for the legalities of it. Are we talking about committees also or just this meeting? No, just a business meeting. Board meetings. Just board meetings. Right. Um, I also wanted to ask about item 86, the MOA with the police department. Did we get a copy or is it the same and the dates are just being changed? Um, Where is that, Mrs. Desenza? Item 86. A6? 86. What page number, please? Um, page number. Um, Mrs. DeCenza, there has been no MOA with 32. the police department yet. Um, That's something it's different. It's 85 now. I'm sorry. It got changed to 85. That's the memorandum. Right. The memorandum of agreement between education and law officials is on page 32, item number 85. That is different than um, having a contract. This is through the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office. Oh. And it's the MOA that we do every year. Um, it was a little late this year because um, there were quite a few changes, um, but Chief DeBella is on it, um, is in it, Ocean County Prosecutor Bill Heimer, and myself. Could we get a copy of that, please? If yes. it's changed, especially. Um, we got some really good news from the business administrator about Standard and Poor's, and I can't wait to see the report, and I hope our rating has improved in the last few years. And I think that's it for right now. Thank you, Mrs. Desenza. Mr. Peters? I have no comments. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Scanlon? Uh, no comment at this time. Mrs. Downing? I just have a question, and I apologize for not calling. Um, to get the answer, but in that list of clubs that you sent us, Dr. Clark, yes, I noticed it says clubs and activities, but the data coach was listed under that. How is that activities? Yeah, it isn't. It's just that that's the list that gets posted. So I just sent you the whole thing. Okay. So yeah. there's yes. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. You're welcome. Mr. Polino. I just have a question about the MOA. Is what is in regards to with the prosecutor's office and police department? Is that for um, the class threes or is that nope. something else it has nothing to do with the class threes it's just a memorandum of agreement of n how the police department notifies school district um, when they have to for a variety of reasons and vice versa when the school district has to notify the police department for reporting of specific incidents it's a very long document so I will share it with you it's extensive okay no problem. but, and, but it's not new okay that's all I have right now yep. thank you Thank you. And Dr. Clark, you had a few corrections, additions, deletions for the agenda? Yes. And um, I think Mrs. DeSenza was referring to it. So on page 32, an item was um, eliminated from the agenda because it was a duplicate. If you take a look at page 5, item 15. Item 15 is the Lacey Township School District Safe Return Plan mm -hmm. was listed again. Um, as item number 84. So if you have the newer version of the agenda, your item 84 should now say extended school year ESY program okay. workers 2021. Right. Okay. And the reason why it was uh, eliminated, again, it was a duplicated item. Item 15 is something that we're going to talk about um, during our board meeting because it relates to our safe return plan for fall 2021 so it's a two-part the first part of the safe return plan speaks specifically to ESSER 3 grant compliance and then the second part of it is the fall 2021 safe return plan so what's going to happen is um, you're all going to receive a copy of those documents this evening after our board meeting and then tomorrow it will get posted on our website um, with information to our school community to collect feedback via email. Um, and then once that happens, the plan is submitted to um, EWIG, which is the Department of Education's platform for submission, and it is due June 24th. So it's not something just Lacey has to do, all school districts have to do it. Okay, so you'll get a copy of those. There was one other thing pulled, Dr. Clark. 
one other thing. Refresh my memory, please. Okay. All right. That was it. I have one more thing uh, for the agenda. I'm so sorry. I just realized it. Um, and I don't know if I'm correct or not, but I attended the awards ceremony and the scholarship ceremony, and all those people that donated money to our students are not on here under donations. I think they should be on here possibly to recognize, or is that a different uh, category while they're not on the board minutes? I'm sorry. All they the scholarships that the seniors received last week at the award ceremony, I think we should include them in our. That's not something we've typically done because we do recognize them at the ceremony and right. we invite them to attend. So, Okay. but it's something we can talk about. Yeah. Right. And the list is in the graduation book, correct? Correct. Right, the, um, on Thursday night, the graduation book has a list of all the donors that gave scholarships. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. At this time, we are going to go into private session. Mr. DeGeorge, please. Be it resolved that a private session be convened for the purpose of discussing confidential student matters, including but not limited to HIV, confidential personnel matters, including but not limited to the annual evaluation of the superintendent of schools, and confidential legal matters, including but not limited to the current caseload. The subject matter of these discussions will be disclosed to the public and the reason for confidentiality subsides. The length of private session is estimated to be 45 minutes, after which the board shall reconvene and proceed with business. Action may be taken. Uh, motion, please. Wait, excuse Wait, me, Pat. We have something to add. Can you add contractual matters, please, to discussion? Specifically. Did you add that? Specifically LTEA. what? Just LTEA. I'm sorry? LTEA. Any objections? No. Thank you. So noted. Can we have a motion, please? Motion. Okay, all in favor? All right, Cafeteria all right. North. Okay. Welcome. I'd like to resume the Board of Education meeting for June 14th, 2021. At this time, we'd like to have the report of the superintendent. Dr. Clark, please. All right. Sorry. Okay, welcome to our uh, June board meeting. We made it through a very, very, very unusual and challenging school year. Of course, we're not quite done yet. We have four days left as our last day of school is this Friday. Um, notwithstanding the challenges, we most um, certainly celebrated many, many milestones. Of course, I am not by any stretch of the imagination going to name all of them, but I think it is important that given the challenges that uh, we all went through together, it's, it's certainly worthy of um, talking about. So most notable is that we were only closed for in-person instruction for four out of 40 <coughs> possible weeks of school. Two weeks in September because we didn't start until the 21st, and then two weeks in January when we closed for two weeks out of an abundance of caution uh, due to high cases of COVID, not in our school district per se, but in our community. In addition to that, uh, we returned all of our students to school five days a week for in-person instruction back in March. All three of our sports seasons ran successfully. In fact, we had many successes related to athletics this year, and we celebrated our students earlier today at 5 o'clock in a recognition ceremony, which was just wonderful. This coming Thursday, June 17th, our 320 seniors will be recognized in the Lacey Township High School 40th annual commencement ceremony and that is open to all parents and families and we are on schedule if you recall we graduated our seniors last july in 90 degree weather so we're uh, very excited that that is not happening this year and more excited about the fact that we can open graduation uh, the graduation ceremony to all of our our families 
This coming Friday, June 18th, 336 eighth graders will be promoted to high school at the promotion ceremony. Again, open to all of our, our, all of our parents and our families. On May 27th, 30 seniors earn their associate's degree and will complete the college academy program when they receive their diplomas on Friday. So they're gonna be receiving a diploma from Lacey Township High School as a senior, having completed all of their requirements. And in addition to that, they have already received an associate's degree. So that's quite amazing. And that program is going very strong. Over $250,000 was awarded to our seniors in scholarships last week. And so we thank our scholarship donors for making that uh, available to our seniors. We have held or will be holding in-person award ceremonies for all of our students in grades four through 12. Uh, and we were able to do that in person and invite our families uh, as well. For the first time in the history of the school district, we celebrated 10 staff members of the month. We're doing our last two for the school year tonight. We were able to present both our fall and spring drama productions. We were able to invite parents and families to all of our spring concerts. We were able to reinstate many of our co-curricular activities midway through the school year. And finally, we are positioned to resume a normal school year in September, full day, five days a week, full lunch. I know our students probably aren't thrilled about that, but I know I am. And I think our Board of Education is as well. So uh, much more to come on that. In fact, uh, we're gonna be talking about Esther 3 and our uh, return to school plan uh, that we are gonna post on our website. But again, I'm, I'm gonna save that for a little later. All right, speaking of staff member of the month, let's transition. Um, as I mentioned, for the first time in the history of our school district, we started running staff members, uh, our staff member of the month program. Once again, never an easy decision to make because we had fantastic nominees this month, but it was unanimous. Um, so at this time, Mrs. McAvoy, are we ready? Yes, we are. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our uh, two staff members. Then I'm going to ask you to come up here and join us on stage so you can get your beautiful plaque. Uh, and then uh, Mr. Lytle is going to play uh, a video that we made um, of all of you. And so our first staff member of the month is Darlene Price. She's our technology teacher at Lacey Town, uh, I'm sorry, at Lenoka Harbor School. And um, I'm going to just read a little bit about Mrs. Price. Uh, Mrs. Price is a leader within the Lenoka Harbor Elementary School building, and as a leader, she exhibits all of the criteria characteristics listed for this award recognition and beyond. Without question, she is the driving force behind the technology initiatives, instructional usage, and device maintenance within our building. As a former student, parent, and classroom teacher at Lenoka, her dedication to this building is unquestionable and rarely matched. Due to her ties to the building and the people it serves, Mrs. Price regularly goes above and beyond and with regard to the services she provides. So Mrs. Price, I couldn't be happier to announce you are named staff member of the month for June. Round of applause. <laughs> and I'm gonna ask you to join us on stage in a moment. Our second staff member of the month is Kathleen DeVita. She's a teacher at Lacey Township Middle School. And I'm gonna read a little bit about uh, Mrs. DeVita. From the moment that she walks into a classroom, Kathleen DeVita's enthusiasm can be felt in her smile and greeting. This is no small element as Kathleen visits many classrooms during her daily schedule as a basic skills teacher for English language arts. In the time that I have known her, I've seen Kathleen work energetically and wholeheartedly to help her students not just pass a class, but to truly understand the material and why those concepts are important. For these reasons and so much more, and there's a whole lot more here that I'm going to share with the both of you, uh, I submit that she deserves to be recognized as a Lacey Staff uh, Member of the Month. We concur and we congratulate you. Round of applause, Mrs. DeVita. All right, at this time, let's have you join us up on stage to give you your plaques.
right, Mr. Lytle, I think we're ready for that video. Hmm? Yeah, so we're going to, uh, no, no video. Nope. So yeah, we're going to go down while the video is dropping. Okay, so here we are. Mrs. Price has been selected for the employee of the month. Now Mrs. Price doesn't have her own classroom, so we've got to kind of pull a little trick on her to get her in here. So we're going to call with a bogus tech problem, one of the million that she's answered all year long, and uh, we'll, we'll see her face when she comes in. So here she comes. Congratulations to Darlene Price for Teacher of the Month. She's been a great resource to us for remote teaching. She's always right there when you need assistance with anything. She comes running down during state testing. She's been an awesome help this year, so congratulations again. Congratulations, Mrs. Price, on being chosen as the District's Employee of the Month for the month of June. I truly could not have made it through the past 15 months without you. All the late and early morning phone calls and texts, bouncing ideas off of each other so that we could make remote learning and in-person learning what it needed to be for our students. You truly are my right-hand woman and go-to person. Congratulations. Mrs. Price, there truly isn't anyone in this school building, uh, staff, student alike, that you have not helped this year. Thank you so much. We couldn't have done it without you. You are the best. Well-deserved. All right, here we are, celebrating another staff member of the month at Lacey Township Middle School. We're going to say hello to Mrs. DeVita, who's done a great job this year for us. Let's go. Everyone's attention, please. Each month, we celebrate a staff member in the, in the district who's done a great job going above and beyond, and has just helped our students and staff in a thousand ways. This month's selected staff member is Mrs. DeVita. So happy for you. Oh my God. Thank you for everything you've done for us this year, for the students, and for the entire building. Thank so, you. On behalf of the district, congratulations. Thank you. 
Congratulations, Mrs. DeVita. You deserve staff member of the month for sure. I am not the only teacher that nominated you for this. Uh, we appreciate you so much. You came into this district last year as a basic skills teacher, but you were way more than that. Um, you've come in as a co-teacher for many of us. It's so nice to have an extra teacher in the classroom who truly, truly cares about her students. Um, you stepped in for me in a big way this year. And, uh, and you still are, you're actually in the classroom right now uh, teaching the students, which is awesome. So thank you and you deserve, um, you deserve the best and you uh, definitely deserve the staff appreciation of the month. So while our board members are on their way back and the screen's going up, congratulations to both of you. What a great way to end the school year. Great video. We'll make sure you both get copies of that. Congratulations. So glad to have you part of our team. Another round of applause. And I'm looking out. I see lots of family members. So can all of you stand up and be recognized? Because they couldn't have done it without all of you. Round of applause to the families and the kids. Good stuff. All right, so just to finish up my comments, uh, again, as I said, uh, though the school year has uh, been anything but traditional, uh, I do want to thank our teachers, our principals, administrators, support staff, board members, and families who have worked tirelessly and collaboratively to make this school year uh, the best that it possibly could have been. Um, it was certainly memorable. And uh, back to normal, back to work in September. And uh, we'll certainly uh, keep our, fam our families uh, updated as to any changes that might uh, come down the line. We know that the changes have been coming fast and furious, especially in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I'm not sure what the summer is going to look like in terms of um, changes, but we certainly will keep you um, informed. OK, that concludes my comments. Board President McAvoy, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Clark. At this time, we'll have the ESSER three presentation by Mr. Zielinski and the district supervisors, please. Yes, I'm sorry. I was supposed to mention that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, Mr. Zielinski, before you start, I, I made a comment for those of you who weren't here earlier uh, that on the agenda, um, we do have a motion um, to approve the submission of the Lacey Township School District Safe Return Plan as part of the ARP ESSER three grant compliance. Now, I know that's a lot of verbiage right there, but in a nutshell, and Mr. Zielinski is going to delve into it a little bit more, um, ESSER three, ESSER two, ESSER one, uh, these are all funds that have been made available to school districts uh, in response to the pandemic. I uh, anticipate that ESSER three is going to be the final version of that, uh, but we, there was a lot of work that we had to do, and uh, Mr. Zielinski is going to talk a little bit about what um, the public can do uh, starting tomorrow. So, Mr. Zielinski, the floor is yours. Right. So, um, just to acknowledge the team, first of all, I mean, of course, Pat George has a huge role to play in the ESSER funding. Uh, we have Sharon Sylvia here. We have Michelle Amos and Joe Bond. Uh, we all kind of collaborate together when we do these things, and of course with your office, Dr. Clark, just to try and get these things together when we talk about reopening, restart, and recovery plans. 
We've been doing this now for over a year um, because we started this when we returned to school in September. We revised it when we returned to uh, five day a week instruction. Now we're gonna revise it again. This time when we revise it, however, they're gonna tie it to um, funding of the ESRA three fund. So this time when we revised our reopening plan, there's two pieces of the puzzle. There's the piece that is for compliance for ESRA three, which we will post on the website starting tomorrow, which is just bullet points. And it's very brief because we're limited to a thousand characters for each point. So there's not a whole lot of meat and potatoes there. But then the larger plan, which some of you may have seen, um, is 75 pages. The front half of it, the front 40 pages, are policies that were given to us through our Strauss Esme program. But the last 40 pages is really where it counts because that's where we have addendums and we've spelled out a little more exactly what we're going to do. So what you're going to see is a complete document, but it's still a document in progress because what you're going to see in there is as conditions exist right now, and we expect, and I'm going to give you an example, we expect those conditions to change from now through September. So the best example that I can give you is um, we have um, uh, relaxed the mask mandate for now due to heat, due to it's almost summertime. Um, the mask mandate still exists. So in the document, you'll see things like wear masks where ap applicable. So we've used language like that that leaves it a little more open-ended so that we know by September we're going to revise again. So maybe the advantage right now and what we're going to do when we post this tomorrow, and we'll have the principals follow up with all of our parents with an email, uh, with all of our families with an email, this is a chance for them to provide us with some commentary, to provide us with some comments uh, about how they view reopening. And Dr. Clark already kind of gave us the view. We are gearing up for full reopening, full days, serving lunches, full co-curricular activities. There is no other way to plan, but we're going to do that within the scope of what we know the rules are at this second, knowing that that's probably going to change uh, through September. So this document is put together as it exists right now because we are tying it to the ESRA 3 funding, uh, which is another piece of the puzzle that we have to do. Public comment is required, and we always appreciate the public comment, and we'll, we'll post the email address that we want the public to comment to. Okay, those come directly to our offices. Uh, we'll be able to take those comments. We'll be able to probably put in some kind of a question sheet at some point uh, moving forward. But again, with conditions changing so quickly, and all for the better right now, knock on wood, uh, we expect this document to be revised again. Um, and then one day we can all exist. We don't need documents like this anymore, and we can go about our normal lives. Uh, that's the hope. So what our parents should expect is that they should expect uh, an email from either uh, um, the board office or their principals to go and inspect these documents if they want to. We'll post them starting tomorrow. Uh, and they're free to comment or not comment. That would be uh, uh, at their leisure and what they want. We'll have some explanation in there too so they know a little bit of what they're looking at because they're going to see things that go, oh, that's not right or that's not right. Again, it's as the conditions exist right now, we revise the big document, which is called Fall 2021 Plan. All right, that we completely expect that document to change again, uh, you know, probably around August 31st or something like that. Uh, you know, hopefully all for the better and they get that more normalcy that, that we talked about. So that's really it. That's the presentation uh, for them to go view those things, uh, look at what we've done uh, to, to get that going for, uh, for the ESRA 3 funding and for September. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zielinski and the team that helped compile that. At this time, we will transition into public comment. An audience member wishing to make a comment shall raise his or her hand and when called upon, state their name, address, or affiliation and intention to make a statement. Comments shall be addressed to the board president. Comments shall be made on one issue at a time. Comments shall be limited to five minutes. No audience member may be recognized twice until all who wish to comment have been recognized. At this time, is there any public comment? Mr. Rizzoli. Tony Rizzoli, Sunrise Beach. Mr. DeGeorge, start the clock. 
All right, fasten your seatbelts. Uh-oh. They're fastened. Okay. Page six, or number six, on page three. Um, $2.5 million reserve was transferred to capital reserves. Um, Mr. DeGeorge, how much did we transfer last year? We ended up transferring $2 million last year, but uh, very important, uh, but subtle, but important distinction, the words up to. Right. Right. So it could be uh, anywhere between a dollar, and it can be no more than $2.5 million if it's available. If it's available. That yes. was my concern. And yep. also on page three, it was 500000 uh, for maintenance. Yes. And again, last year, was it lower? It was 400 last year. Okay, so we have, we expect to have more money available this year to put in reserve for things that are going to happen. Hopefully, we'll have the money to take care of them. So we're, we have the money to plan better. Yes, that's okay. the goal. That's what I wanted the public to really hear. Um, on pay, uh, number 16, page 6, on the, the, I'm going from the agenda, folks. Um, can you define access control for me? Because I don't know if access control means building access or computer system access. It's uh, building access. It's building a, access. Uh, it's the official way to say burglar alarm okay we don't um, use that term so that doesn't include the memorandum where we're talking with the law no, enforcement sir. or anything like that no sir no money for law enforcement it's strictly uh, burglar systems yes and it's only used at night or can we lock doors during the day well all doors are locked during the day they're supposed to be locked during the day okay you from us can we do it from a central access point electronically to lock the doors? Yeah. Enough. This is just uh, intrusion detection if the, uh, if the alarm is on. But you typically don't put the alarm on during the day, like if your house is going to come and go. OK, I know it's pie in the sky, but you know I spent some time in Florida, and yeah. you're talking about access control and being able to lock the doors during the day if there was an intruder, lock everybody in, bulletproof windows, a lot of different things that they could do. But I'm. I was wondering if that was part of it, but we haven't gotten to that point, thank God, yet? No, sir. Okay. So bringing it up just for everybody's knowledge and maybe something we can do in the future. Um, uh, number 39 and number 38 on the agenda. Speak to curriculum. Now, this may be a kind of a touchy subject for a lot of people, but then again, I, you know, I bring up touchy subjects. So. Um, the history curriculum, there's been a change. It's $197. Now, Mrs. Downey, you're on a, excuse me, can I address Mrs. Downey? Well, can we have your question, please? Okay, the question is, who reviews the curriculum before it's purchased? Okay. Um, first, the district supervisors do. Okay. That would be Mrs. Amos and Mr. Zielinski. Okay, and then after that? Then they bring it to the curriculum committee. Of which would one be of Mrs. the board members is a member. Mrs. Downing's the chairperson, myself and Mr. Polino are on the committee. Okay. This history curriculum change, um, I see it for the high school purchase of United States history and um, the new curriculum. And it was also uh, my World Interactive American History curriculum for sixth through eighth grade. Um, has there been any major changes in the curriculum on teaching American history in the recent past year? Mr. Decker, do you have information on that? Well, there, there may not be. So the teachers also review new curriculum just to add that to the question but as you know history in and of itself may not change but teaching methodologies may change questioning a lot of times we we're, we're moving into an area where we're teaching children how to extrapolate information in a better way from reading text 
So these texts are designed differently in accordance with new standards and curriculum uh, standards that we're supposed to meet so children can be able to ascertain information from text in different methods. So the texts are geared in different ways. So, I mean, history doesn't necessarily change, you're right. And I think that's what you're kind of going to, but the uh, instructional methodologies may change and the content curriculum areas may change with regard to what we're expecting students to be able to do. Okay. Know. Mr. Zoll, your five minutes is up. Can we see if there are any sure. other public comments? You can come back. At this time, is there any other public comments? Mr. Rizzoli? I need the exercise. Yes. Anyway, um, don't take me wrong, but that's what I was afraid of. Uh, the way it's interpreted, the way it's passed on. Now, history doesn't change, but history's been in the news a lot. But one thing that hasn't been in the news, and one thing that I hasn't seen that's changed, has been district policy 2110, the philosophy of education, and the mission statement of this district. And in the mission statement of this district under that number, it talks about a democratic society. It talks about all cultures and teach students to value diversity. And these are all good things. It also teaches, let's see, um, so with the support of parents and the support of community, and promoting high academic standards and providing the resources so that they can pass on those standards. The one thing I don't see in the mission statement, and I'd like this board to review, it doesn't hold teachers accountable in how they put their personal feelings on how to communicate the history of the United States to our teachers, from our teachers to our students. Where's the accountability of how the teacher puts in their personal views? It's not an admission statement. Who monitors it? How is it being communicated to our students? Is there a check and balance to what the community values are? This is a challenge I give to this district and to the curriculum committee and also to the administration. You see in the news all over the place talking about um, the teaching of slavery and civil rights and more is absolutely it should be taught. However, it should be argued that teachers should not go beyond the historical facts and paint a, por a portrait of, quote, something like a rotten nation. Now, I don't know what the teachers are saying to our students. I'm not a parent. I have a dog in a race. And I'm concerned that whoever graduates out of this district gets a fair and equal look at the history of how this nation came, up, came about. Now, why do I say this? Well, I'm lucky enough to be uh, spending a, a lot of my life with a Viking. And I'm Italian. And I walk in the Columbus State Parade more than once down Fifth Avenue. And it's tough when that Viking says, my grandmother's maiden name was Erickson. If you get my drift, there's two sides to history. And at this point, I think both are wrong. I think it had to do with people who came across from the Bering Sea when it was a landmass. And they were the ones who discovered this continent and emigrated to South America and the Caribbean. And as for that guy, Columbus, yeah, I've been a Knight of Columbus for over 50 years. Was he good? He was good. He brought a lot of things to the cannibalistic, human sacrificing Indians of the Caribbean. He brought animal husbandry. He brought water systems. He brought knowledge and science. He brought Christianity. He brought laws, values that all of you were raised with, things that we cherish. I'm just concerned that over the course and period of time, that it's being communicated in an objective manner and not from a specifically unpopular point of view, maybe in this community. 
It may be popular in other communities, but you're a district in this community, and you're the Board of Education in this community. And its values you should be well aware of. Prepare for the war. If you change things and it gets back to the parents, you're going to have a line outside this door. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Rizzoli. We appreciate your comments. Are there any other comments at this time? Okay. See. Sorry, Mrs. McAvoy. Also, there were no comments received via the Google form platform. Oh, perfect. Thank you very much. At this time, we will move into committee reports. Mr. Scanlon, Finance, Facilities, and Operations, please. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank Mr. Rizzoli for bringing up the uh, question about the um, security system, which I was going to try and explain. But uh, I think we got a better, better answer from Mr. DeGeorge. Uh, the other large expenditure that shows up or is coming up is a $2 million project of, with, used with ESSER funds. Uh, that's the emergency funds uh, related to COVID. Uh, and that will be to replace in all six schools various uh, parts of the uh, HVAC, HVAC systems, um, including rooftop units uh, and um, computer access, uh, a, a variety of projects. And that, of course, is with uh, federal grant money. The, uh, the, the, if you look at the agenda tonight, and uh, if you've gotten the um, board meeting booklet uh, and look through it, you'll see there's about probably close to 20 pages of items that relate to um, uh, cooperative, uh, cooperative purchase, um, different contract uh, with professionals, uh, pest management, a variety of uh, annual business reorganization requirements. And uh, it, it, it makes it quite a lengthy agenda, uh, but it's required because as we end Jan uh, June and go into July, we start a new fiscal year. So we have to renew all these contracts. And uh, I think basically that covers what we need to Okay. Thank you, Mr. Scanlon. At this time, we'll have a policy report by Mr. Peters. Thank you, President McAvoy. Uh, myself, Ms. Klaus, Mr. Sunset, and Dr. Clark uh, had our policy meeting. Reviewed the following policies and regulations that might have been recommended for revision by Strauss Esme, which is our attorney firm, which uh, sends us all our re revised policies will be placed on the June agenda for the first read. The policies were 1642, earned sick leave, policy 533001, administration of medical cannabis, revised, policy number 53301, administration of cannabis, revised, 7425, lead testing in the water in the schools, which was revised, and we also looked at 7425, uh, lead testing, which would be new. The committee tabled the policy of regulation 2624, I'm sorry, 2624, grading because there are questions that need to be explored before we have our first read on the grading policy. Policy regulation bylaw updates. Dr. Clark provided the committee with an overview of the following policies and regulations that have been recommended for the revision of Strauss SMA. The committee will review the revisions of the next policy committee meeting and place them on the July agenda for the first read. Academic standards, assessments, accountability. Policy number 2415-01, 2415-02, 
Title I, Fiscal Responsibilities, which is also a revision. 2415-05, Student Surveys, Analysis, and Evaluations, revised. We have some new ones, 2415.20, Every Student Succeeds Act. We also have Employment of Support Staff Members, revised. And we also have Policy 6360, Political Contributions, revised. And that is it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peters. At this time, we'll have board comments. Mrs. Claus, please. Sure. Good evening. I just want to congratulate all the students that we honored today at the 5 o'clock athletic recognition ceremony. I believe we had seven teams in total um, that earned the conference champ status. As a parent of two former student athletes, I have seen firsthand the time and dedication our coaches put into their programs, as well as the family's dedication and overall support. I wanted to thank all the coaches who led their students into a successful season. You should be very proud of your leadership and commitment to this district. We are. I wanted to give uh, Mr. Olander a shout out tonight. Um, I saw my first high school chorus concert a few weeks ago. Um, I counted 33 students that was participating, and he really put on an excellent show. Um, also, I completed my governance one board requirement. It was broken down into three parts, about two hours each. Some topics included functions of the boards, goal setting, labor relations, open public meeting acts, sunshine law, and policy. And that's it. I'm just looking forward to the graduation ceremonies. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Desenza. Did you want me to do spotlight on Lacey graduates first? That would be great. Thank you. Okay. Um, tonight the light shines and it is flag day and we celebrate a few military grads and others. 2007 Lacey High School graduate Michael Adamski Jr. U.S. Navy graduated from Annapolis in 2011. He's currently in Naval Graduate School in Monterey, California completing his master's degree in oceanography. He's a lieutenant commander and will be assigned to a large carrier group in December as oceanography meteorology officer. Congratulations to the Adamski family. Mike Jr. is married and has two small children. 2011 Lacey High School graduate, Michael Martinek, U.S. Navy. He was commissioned as an ensign in November 2019, currently serving as an intelligence officer with Strike Fighter Squadron 83, assigned to CVN-69. That is the aircraft carrier, the USS Eisenhower. 2013, Lacey Mates graduate, Matthew Moeller, is a surface warfare officer with the U.S. Navy, just promoted to lieutenant on June 2nd, currently stationed at Naval Base Bahrain as a navigation officer aboard PC-9, the USS Chinook, a patrol craft. Matthew and his wife, Krista, reside in Bahrain. 2016 Lacey graduate and brother of Matthew, Michael Moeller, is currently a Plumstead Township Police Officer. He holds a degree in business from OCC. Michael is married to his wife, Stephanie, and they have a little girl, Parker Elizabeth. 2015 Lacey High School graduate Matthew Lemke is now a veteran of the U.S. Navy. He completed four years as an aviation machinist mate E4 and is now finishing his bachelor's degree at TCNJ in history. 2017 graduate Ronald Donahue is in the U.S. Navy also, currently stationed in Japan with the Seabees Mobile Construction Battalion 4 of the Navy. Ronnie's current rank is Construction Mechanic E3. Ron is due back stateside to San Diego this summer. And my last uh, highlight is uh, 2015 Lacey High School graduate, Mr. Gavin Rossi, is now a data scientist with the Urban and Civic Informatics Lab at Rutgers University. Gavin obtained his Bachelor of Science and Master's of Science in Data Analytics from Stockton, graduating with a 4.0 for the Master's. And thank you to all who have served, who serve and have served in our military. Thank you, Mrs. Desenza. And my regular comment. Congratulations to all of our graduating seniors. The COVID class of 2021, you will truly be remembered. Hope everyone has a great time at the prom on the farm tomorrow. Congratulations to all our student athletes. 
They will honor it at a celebration at 5 p.m. before our meeting tonight. And congratulations to our staff members of the month, Mrs. Price, Mrs. DeVita. Great job. Sorry, I missed the uh, high school band concert on Tuesday night, May 25th, but I was able to watch it later on YouTube. Please watch anything that you might have missed on YouTube. The link is on the uh, school website. Thank you to all who made this great concert possible. The jazz band was just amazing. Thursday, May 27th, I stopped by to see the setup of the junior prom. It was beyond fantastic, very creative. Utilizing the outdoor memorial courtyard of the high school and the parking lot with a DJ under a tent for a dance floor. It was a beautiful weather night. Thank you so much to our staff that put this memorable event together for the students. After I visited the junior prom, I went to the municipal building for the township committee meeting. Once again, this meeting was quite entertaining and I highly recommend watching it on YouTube or Channel 21 if you have Comcast. May 27th was also the day 33 seniors graduated from Ocean County College with their associate's degrees under the Lacey High School College Academy program. Congratulations to all and we wish we could have been there to cheer you. This is the fourth and largest cohort of college graduates from Lacey's College Academy program. On May 31st at 11 a.m., there was an annual Memorial Day, Memorial Day celebration at the Municipal Park. It was very well attended. We should always take the time to remember our veterans, especially those missing in action that never came home. Next year, the township hopes the Memorial Day Parade will be back in place. The evening of June 1st at 8 p.m. was the film festival outdoors on the football field at the high school. It felt like a step back in time to the drive-in movies. Great films, congratulations to all the winners, and thank you to all who made this ninth annual Outdoor Film Festival possible. June 2nd, there was a chorus concert at the high school. Um, it was a great group of students, and the songs were wonderful, and we were able to hold this event in the auditorium. Monday, June 7th, was high school awards and scholarship night on the football field. Our outdoor venue was, again, just beautiful. Congratulations to all the students, several won substantial awards, and the grand total of local scholarship awards was over $256,000. Tuesday, June 8th, we attended the Forked River School promotion and awards ceremony, and it was very wonderful to see the students again to celebrate their achievements, and the football field proved to be a great outdoor venue. Wednesday, June 9th, at 10 a.m., the Lenoka Harbor School had their promotion and awards ceremony, also outdoors, it was very hot, but it was a wonderful time for all. You could see how cheerful the students were. Thursday, uh, June 10th, was the promotion and awards ceremony for Cedar Creek. That morning, we got a cool rain shower as a break from the heat. Thank you to Principal Renuska, who shared with us a virtual art show for Cedar Creek. I never saw anything like it. Great music and great artwork. In spite of COVID, the students managed to be very creative. This week I also did a bill review. I think I saw the lowest electric bill ever for the district at just $19,000. There was a preschool ceremony held at the Cedar Creek School Pavilion. It was beautiful and adorable. And today, um, this morning at uh, nine o'clock was the award ceremony for the middle school here in the auditorium. This Thursday, we have high school graduation, and Friday will be the middle school promotion ceremony. We have a very lengthy agenda tonight for a variety of reasons. If the public has any questions subsequently about anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to the administration. And just a reminder, if you want to email the board, please send the email to all seven of us at the same time. Our next meeting is scheduled for July 15th. It's a Thursday. Please join us if you can. Thanks to all in attendance here tonight. And last but not least, there's only six weeks left to become a school board member candidate. The deadline is July 26th by 4 p.m. Thank you, Mrs. McAvoy. Thank you. Mr. Peters. Thank you. And Mr. Santo, I'm glad we don't have to reimburse you for mileage for all those events you went to. That's awesome that you did that. I would never <laughs> be, think of it. It'd be a pretty big bell. Um, seems like some of the board members write speeches, and I'm just going from the heart here and winging at what I exposed uh, was exposed to the last couple of weeks. 
Uh, number one, the uh, award ceremony and the scholarship ceremony was phenomenal. Thank you to all who donated. I think we are 200 over a quarter million dollars. Yep. Thank you for your donations. The awards were uh, pretty impeccable, and if you were there with your parent or your, as a student, you were picked out of a few people that deserve to be there, and thank you for your hard work. Um, during our policy meeting with uh, Ms. Claus, Ms. Descent, and Dr. Clark, a torrential downstorm came in, rain came in, and thunder, lightning, the whole nine yards. And as we exited the board office from our meeting, we heard a loud a uh, thunder strike hit and it hit apparently close to or if not Cedar Creek School. And as we were walking out of the building, the fire department was already pulling up. So I witnessed something um, as a board member that I was pretty proud of. Uh, the principal there, Mr. Vernuska, had the fire department there. She had all her uh, custodians walking around checking out the school. Apparently there was some smoke coming from different panels and whatnot. And just the orchestration I saw at 5.30 at night, an immense of chaos. Um, it was extremely organized, uh, extremely calm. They knew exactly what they were doing. And the fire department would like to reach out to and thank also uh, all those guys went through the entire building checking for smoke or any damage that was possible. They were making sure the school was safe for our kids the next day. And unfortunately, we did have to close the school the next day until we had everything rectified that it was safe. So uh, kudos out to those guys, and thank you. Um, I also attended the Mill Pond Course concert. And I'll tell you what, being a music person myself, I was pretty impressed seeing these younger kids play the Imagine Dragons. The Imagine Dragons, is that how I say? Yeah, Imagine yeah. Dragons. They were awesome with that. And then out of nowhere, they came out with an Asia song. I'm like, good God, these kids can't know the words of these songs. They had to learn them, but it wasn't back in the day, you know? And it was pretty, pretty exciting to see that. And from what I understand, the f probably 80% of their um, rehearsals were done virtually. So just kudos out to the, uh, to the Mill Pond School guys over there for doing a great Mr. job. Mr. Peters, how about Here Comes the Sun? Yes, Here Comes the Sun. Well, that okay. was your era, Mrs. Yes. <laughs> McAvoy, it was about Mr. Out Peters and I were enjoying ourselves. We were, we were sitting yes. next to each other and just like, wow, they're playing this. Wow, they're playing that. They never heard these songs before, you know? So, but uh, anyway, it was uh, an enjoyable month to be a board member and uh, looking forward to the next, next few meetings that we're having and uh, graduation on Thursday night. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Downing? Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate all the teams that were here tonight and for all the student athletes that have participated throughout the year. As we keep saying redundantly, it's been an unusual year, but they were there and they were able to have um, some kind of sports all throughout the year. So I want to thank um, all the coaches and people that were involved in making that happen. Um, I want to congratulate, make it an early congratulations to all our graduates. Um, it's so nice that we're going to be able to graduate in June, not like last year in July in the heat, but in June. And congratulations also to the middle school graduates. Enjoy your night and make sure you thank your parents and your guardians for everything they've done for you. Um, I also want to wish um, anyone at the middle school that are going on next year to MATES or the Law and Public Safety Program or PAA, the Performing Arts Academy. Lots of luck to your uh, success in those programs as well. Uh, the scholarship night was phenomenal. It was a beautiful night, a little warm, but ended up being very nice. And a lot of um, scholarships were awarded. And I have attended some of the award ceremonies, hot as it's been, but it's been great to see all our little ones out on the football field um, getting their awards. I want to congratulate, and they already left, but Mrs. Price and Mrs. DeVita for staff member of the month. It was a hard decision, as always, and, uh, but it was unanimous, and it was two good choices. Um, I want to also congratulate the uh, Lacey College Academy graduates as well. I'm so glad to see that program really taking off even bigger than it was. 
But all in all, as you're sitting here listening to all the board members speak tonight about this award and that award and this program, I want to really um, thank all the staff members, whether they're the teachers, administrators, who have put all these programs together for our students to make it as normal as possible. Uh, the creativity that has gone into some of these programs, as Mrs. DeSenza said, the visual art show. Um, it's just phenomenal what they have done. So I want to really congratulate all the administrators and teachers for doing such a great job. And last but not least, I want to wish Mr. Decker a happy retirement and good luck on your endeavors, whatever it may be, and uh, enjoy it. That's it, Mrs. McAvoy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scanlon. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate all the high school graduates and middle school graduates uh, <clears throat> that will be celebrating this week. Uh, and congratulations to the sports teams, which we had some really nice successes this spring uh, in athletics. Uh, with the uh, quarter million dollars in um, awards that were given to in scholarships, I, I often wonder, boy, wouldn't it be nice if there was a way we could find out on top of that how much money individual colleges have granted to our students that have been accepted? Because I think then that would make that number, uh, that would really inflate it. That would bring it up because when... Uh, when, when a student gets $3,500 uh, uh, $3, or $5,000 aid from a school, and then you add that up with each individual student that may be getting something like that, uh, it would really show that there's a lot more success here than even a quarter of a million dollars, which is nothing to sneeze at. But uh, what I'm saying is, you know, obviously we can uh, we, that, that number could be inflated. <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. Somehow, somehow I'm not saying it well. But anyway, and I just congratulate all those students who have received aid from individual colleges as well because it just shows four years of hard work pays off. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Polino, please. Thank you. So to be quick, just want to... Um, <clears throat> Congratulate uh, Mrs. Price, Ms. DeVita on your awards. Um, uh, outstanding job. Uh, you make us all proud. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> to our athletes and our uh, scholars on your awards, uh, congratulations to all of you. It's well deserved. Um, you work hard all year. Uh, future congratulations to our uh, high school and middle schoolers who are graduating. I'm looking forward to that on Thursday and Friday, and hopefully we'll have no rain, so things will be good. Um, <clears throat> I want to congratulate Mr. Decker on his final meeting with us, and I want to thank him for his hard work um, starting in uh, getting the, uh, the, the ball rolling on the, the revamping of our guidance uh, curriculum structure. So we're, we're, uh, we're happy and appreciative of what you've done with that. Um, <clears throat> I just want to add on um, a spotlight uh, to our students. Uh, uh, Mrs. Downing spotlighted uh, Luke Vincentini a few months back. Um, Luke, if you remember, he was a 214 graduate. Um, he uh, was working for Carlos Bakery at a Cake Boss, which you see on TV. Um, he left there and he made his way out to uh, the West Coast in Washington. Um, and that's where he hooked up with some, uh, some celebrities out there, was doing some uh, high-end cakes for them, impressive stuff. Um, but Luke has made his way back. He's now working out of a studio in uh, Asbury Park, um, and he is launching this week um, a bunch of YouTube episodes on the how-to and the what-ifs and what he does. Um, so we're very proud of him and, and his endeavors. So just take a look at Luke Vincentini on YouTube, and you can see all of his archived cakes that he has done. It's really some miraculous stuff. Um, I want to uh, comment on Brooke and Ella's uh, artwork for our uh, booklets this month. Um, great stuff and uh, certainly something to look forward to in the next few months. Get, get out there on the beach. And I think Mrs. Downing already has because she's awful red. And, uh, <laughs> um, uh, and with that, I just want to wish everybody a good summer because um, after this, you know, we're going to be into it. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Decker, I too want to wish you happy retirement. It was nice working with you in curriculum the last couple of years, and good luck to you. You're welcome. 
Um, I just want to say how wonderful it was that our administration made the choice to let the students and the staff um, be optional to wear masks last Tuesday. So many teachers commented that it was so nice to see, to finally see their students smile. So I know it was a welcome. We got many emails from parents and different groups that they wanted um, the administration to make that decision. And so I applaud our administration for making it an optional choice. And I want to thank Mr. Zielinski and Mrs. Amos for all their work on the summer enrichment program. And I know you had help with Mr. Bond and the other administrators, but we're really looking forward to that enrichment program and it's much needed in the district, so thank you. And I agree with what everybody else said up here. Um, the promotion ceremonies, the band, the concerts, um, the, um, the film festival, it's one of the best parts of being a board member is celebrating all the successes of the students in our district. So, and we're looking forward to graduations this week. Saying that, we'll move on to board business. At this time, I would like a motion for number one, the meeting minutes. Motion, motion. Peters. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Mrs. Claus. Yes. Mr. Scanlon. I have to abstain. Mr. Peters. Yes. Mrs. DeSenza. Yes. Mrs. Downing. Yes, and I'm abstaining on A, bill number 950450, and bill number 953821 due to conflict. Two or two. Right. We will get to that in the next group. Four minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. <coughs> Polino. Yes. Mrs. McAvoy. Yes. Okay, now we're on to bills, list of bills, numbers two and three. Can we have a motion, please? Motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Claus. Yes. Mr. Scanlon. I was not able to review the bill, so I'm going to abstain. Thank you. Mr. Peters. Yes, I'm going to abstain on 951181 and A42. Okay, thank you. Mrs. DeSenza. Uh, yes, on all except nay on 52 clothing items, which I will send to you in an email. Thank you. Mrs. Downing. Um, yes, with abstentions. You want me to repeat them? Nope. I'm good. I got you. Thank you. Mr. Polino. Yes. Mrs. McAvoy. Yes. Moving on to numbers four and five, transfer, transfers and the reporting, pages two and three. Can we mm -hmm. have a motion, please? Motion. I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call. Mrs. Claus. Yes. Mr. Scanlon. Yes. Mr. Peters. Yes. Mrs. DeSenza. Yes on all except nay on item five under four budget transfers. Gotcha. Mrs. Downing? Yes. Mr. Polino? Yes. Mrs. McAvoy? Yes. Moving on to item six to 15, financial items, transfers of funds, sale of solar renewable energy credits, Every Student Succeeds Act, IDEA Grant, Our Children, Future Bond, the American Rescue Plan, and the Lacey Township School District Safe Return Plan. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? I have uh, something like this. Mr. DeGeorge, uh, under our sale of SREX, just to go with the solar thing, do they uh, come in and, and, and check our system to see if it's producing what it should be at, at the, the, the megawatts or wattage that it is mm -hmm. at? Yes, the answer is yes. Uh, our district approved uh, solar vendor comes in every quarter to check the equipment. Uh, they have a log on to our monitoring system so they can see if there are any faults. And uh, we also have, uh, uh, I check it, Mr. Oliveira checks it, 
and uh, I'll just keep saying the same thing. The, the system still outperforms the original specs, which Great. I think is, Thank you. is marvelous. That's very good. Am I voting now? Yes. Sure. Yes. Okay. Yes. We're good, Mrs. Uh, yep. Mrs. Claus? Yes. Mr. Scanlon? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Mrs. Sensa? Yes. Mrs. Downing? Yes. Mr. Polino? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you jumped the gun, Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. McAvoy. Yes. Moving on to items 16 to 27. They are items that pertain to facilities, receipt of bids and on contracts, cooperative purchase, state contract purchase, receipt of quotes and awards, toilet room facilities, appointment of asbestos, approval of pest management, appointment of insurance, brokers, property and casualty insurance, prescription insurance premiums, student prices for lunch, and award of contract for delivery of food services. Can we have a motion, please? Motion. Second. Any discussion? Yes. Okay. I have a question with the license. I don't know if it's a proper time to ask or not, but is our facilities director also licensed for weed control or just for fertilization? Just for fertilization. It, does weed control come under that? Um, I really don't. I don't know for sure, but I'll, I'll get back to you. Thank you. I do not know. Okay. I Eddie? One, one question. I'm sorry. Sure. Just, I, I just want to make sure I'm reading this correctly. There's no increase in food, the lo cost of That lunches. is correct. Okay. That is correct. We Thank didn't think, you. We didn't think it was right. Right. Thank you. Any more discussion on them? Okay. Roll call, please. Mrs. Claus. Yes. Mr. Scanlon? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Mrs. DeSenso? Yes. Mrs. Downing? Yes. Mr. Polino? Yes. Mrs. McAvoy? Yes. Moving on to technology items, numbers 28 to 35, network licensing, contract purchase, renew of real time, renew of Blackboard, renew of Canvas, renew of SmartNet, and renewal of Frontline. Can Motion, we have Peters? Thank you. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Claus? Yes. Mr. Scanlon? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Mrs. DeSenso? Yes. Mr. Mrs. Downing? Yes. Sorry about that. Mr. Polino? <laughs> yes. Mrs. McAvoy? Yes. Next is curriculum items, numbers 36 to 41, purchase of educational goods, Envision Math, the ELA curriculum, the history curriculum, United States History Curriculum, Forensics Curriculum, and Music Curriculum. I'll Can move. Move. Thank yep. you. Second. Mrs. DeSenza, second. Any discussion? Yeah, I have. I have. Uh, my own. Um, just to confirm. So, what we're purchasing for history is we're not changing what they're taught from what we had. We're just um, coming up with new tools to teach them. We're standards, the, the same standards that we've always taught. Okay. It's just a different book that approaches it okay. maybe in a different way, but it's the same content. Yeah, same it's content. Not different. We're not We're changing not anything new, different. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I know where you're going. Yeah. And with, it's a no, big topic no, right now. Yeah, so that's, that's not what we're, this okay. is to keep the. Definitely not included. Okay. Okay. Any more discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Claus? Yes. Mr. Scanlon? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Mrs. DeSenza? Yes. Mrs. Downing? Yes. Mr. Polino? Yes. Mrs. McAvoy? Yes. Next, we move on to transportation. Items 42 to 46, student transportation management system, extended school year bus routes, student transportation jointure, parental transportation contract and another parental transportation contract. Can we have a motion, please? Motion. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Claus? Yes. Mr. Scanlon? Yes. Mr. Peters? Abstain. From everything, sir? No, number 42, I'm sorry. Gotcha. Mrs. DeSenza? Yes. Mrs. Downing? Yes. Mr. Polino? Yes. Mrs. McAvoy? Yes. 
items 47 to 49 participate in participation in the NJSIAA random drug <coughs> testing and random drug testing for student alcohol or other drug use that prohibited substances. Motion, Peters. I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Claus. Yes. Mr. Scanlon. Yes. Mr. Peters. Yes. Mrs. DeSensa. Yes. Mrs. Downing. Yes. Mr. Polino. Yes. Mrs. McAvoy. Yes. Moving on to items 50 to 56, annual adoptions. So we have the official newspaper, we have annual appointments, the approved tax shelter annuities, approval of depositories, representative requesting grant funding, line item transfers, and adoption of the uniform minimum chart of accounts. I'll move. Thank Second. You. Thank you. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Claus. Yes. Mr. Scanlon. Yes. Mr. Peters. Yes. Mrs. DeSenso. Yes. Mrs. Downing. Yes. Mr. Polino. No 150, yes on rest. <clears throat> Number 50, you said? Yes. Thank you. But no. Mrs. McAvoy. Yes. Next, purchasing items 57 to 64 appointment of qualified purchasing agent goods and services <laughs> and New Jersey cooperative bid maintenance program items 57 to 64 I'll make that motion second any discussion roll call please mrs. Claus yes mr. Scanlon yes mr. Peters Yes, no on 64. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Mrs. DeSensa? Yes. Mrs. Downing? Yes. Mr. Polino? Yes. Mrs. McAvoy? Yes. Item 65 to 80, which are professional services. Appointment of an auditor, appointment of the board attorney, the labor attorney, special education attorney, appointment of the architect, appointment of special education related services providers, <coughs> related services, the computer software services, appointment of fixed asset appraisal services, Continuing disclosure agent, a policy advisor, E-rate services, approval to pay outstanding reoccurring monthly expenses, appointment of a claims auditor, appointment of custodian of records, and the appointment of records management. Can I have a motion, please? Item 65 to 8. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Uh, yeah, I have yes. a discussion. Go ahead, Mr. Number Peters. 75, appointment of policy advisor. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. What number? Number, number 75. <laughs> policy advisor, is that Strauss Esme? Right. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. It says uh, Strauss Esme in the very last uh, mini paragraph. That is Strauss Esme. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Roll call, please. Mrs. Claus. Yes. Mr. Scanlon. Yes. Mr. Peters. Yes. Mrs. DeSensa. Yes on all except nay on 65 and 74. Thank you. Mrs. Downing. Yes. Mr. Polino. Yes. Mrs. McAvoy. Yes. Items 81 to 87, use of facilities, sale of disposable assets, first read of policies and regulations, the extended school year program, memorandum of agreement between the education and law officials, added district placement school year calendar, and the summer athletic program schedule. Motion, please. Motion, Peters. I'll second, second the motion. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Claus. Yes. Mr. Scanlon. Yes. Mr. Peters. Yes. Mrs. DeSensa. Yes. 
Mrs. Downing? Yes. Mr. Polino? Yes. Mrs. McAvoy? Yes. Next items 88 and 89, which are both harassment, intimidation, and bullying items. Move. Motion, please. Move. Motion. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Claus? Yes. Mr. Scanlon? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Mrs. DeSensa? Yes. Mrs. Downing? Yes. Mr. Polino? Yes. Mrs. McAvoy? Yes. Moving on to letter B, donations. Motion. Second. Uh, thank you. Okay. Any discussion? I'm sorry, who is the second, Mrs. McAvoy? Mrs. DeSensa? Thank you. Roll call, please. Mrs. Claus? Yes. Mr. Scanlon? Yes, and thank you. Mr. Peters? Yes. Mrs. DeSensa? Yes, and thank you very much. Mrs. Downing? Yes. Mr. Polino? Thank you, yes. Mrs. McAvoy? Yes. Next, page 34, programs and curriculum. Mm -hmm. Motion? Move. Second. Any discussion? Sir, who is the motion, Mrs. McAvoy? Oh. Thank you very much. Right there under my nose, I didn't see it. Okay. okay. Roll call, please. Mrs. Claus? Yes. Mr. Scanlon? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Mrs. DeSensa? Yes. Mrs. Downing? Yes. Mr. Polino? Yes. Mrs. McAvoy? Yes. Next, we have D, certificated personnel items 1 to 13. And at this time, we will be voting to appoint Mr. Zielinski as the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction for the District. So that will be items 1 to 13. Can we have a motion, please? Mr. Polino, a second? Second, second Peters. Okay, any discussion? I just very briefly, I'd like to um, thank the uh, people who've served the district well, who've resigned their positions, and uh, we'll miss them. Yes. Uh, and as mm -hmm. far as the new positions go, especially the uh, assistant superintendent, Mr. Zielinski, I think is a very, very good choice. And I uh, would like to just say to the board, though, as he moves up, I would like to see us get together uh, and evaluate what positions are to be filled, he moves from his position, we should evaluate what our needs are before we fill any further positions. Thank you. Thank you. Any more discussion? Yes. On, yes, Mr. Peters. I'd like to uh, thank Mr. Decker for serving us. Enjoy your retirement. And congratulations, Mr. Zelensky. <laughs> any more discussion? I'd just like to say thank you, too. It's been a few months but you've done a great job good luck on your retirement and congratulations mr Zelensky, on your promotion we didn't vote for him yet well no, it's gonna pass <laughs> <laughs> right okay yes yes yep. any any more discussion okay roll call please mrs claus yes congratulations mr, mr. scanlon <laughs> yes mr peters yes mrs desensa yes mrs downing Yes, and congratulations. Ma'am, can I uh, interest you in abstaining from? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I have to abstain. From D3? Sorry, from yeah. number three? Yes. <laughs> I was. I was caught up in the moment. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Polino. Uh, congratulations to our people who are retiring. Welcome to the new people aboard. Mr. Zelensky, you have a lot of work ahead of you. Mr. Decker is leaving you a, a footprint to follow. So we're excited about that. Mr. Decker, I just said to him, I said, you're going to work harder now that you're retired. Trust me, um, it happens. But uh, yes. Okay. Mrs. McAvoy. Yes. And I want to wish good luck to the three people that resigned. They've been very instrumental in our district. And congratulations, Mr. Zelensky. So, yes. At this time, E, non-certificated personnel, numbers one to nine. Uh, Mrs. McAvoy, yes, can I ask a, a, a courtesy? Yes. Um, on number seven, uh, there's a John Cuglieri in that list. Uh, that should not be. 
so I'd ask a courtesy to remove that before what we page vote. is that mr. D George 41 42 okay so this is an e that we're voting on now the non certificated yes, personnel number, number seven number seven yes so we are taking off Cougli Cuglieri Joe yes Cuglieri. John yes John please. Cuglieri yes. so when we're voting he is removed from this vote yes ma'am thank you can I have a motion please motion Peters Second. any discussion roll call please mrs. Claus yes Mr. Scanlon? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Mrs. DeSensa? Yes. Mrs. Downing? Yes. Mr. Polino? Yes. Mrs. McAvoy? Yes. Mr. DeGeorge, at this time, are there any walk on resolutions? No, ma'am. That is all we have. Okay. That concludes our meeting. Can we have a motion to adjourn? Adjourn. All Second. in favor? Aye. Thank you for coming out, everyone. Good night.